Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar at Notes Code. We appreciate your time and we're grateful that uh, we have uh, a great presentation uh, ready for you today. Our presenter today is Sivan from, excuse me, Siva from Marga Systems. He is a technical lead uh, for Domino uh, Server Administration. Our topic today, of course, is uh, Domino Administration, Best Practices, Gaps, and Some Solutions. Just a reminder that uh, we will record this presentation. It will be made available uh, both at the Notes Code website and at Marga Systems website. If you do have questions, we will have a question and answer a segment at the end of uh, Siva's presentation. If you have a question as he's uh, presenting a certain topic uh, along the way, go ahead and type that question into your um, uh, question area in your go to webinar panel control panel t that uh, should be either opened or collapsed to the right side of your screen there's a red uh, box with a white arrow that will collapse and uh, expand that for you so uh, don't don't hesitate to type in a question and uh, Siva and uh, or someone from his team will uh, be happy to respond to that those questions at the end of uh, the presentation okay so without uh, uh, further ado I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you Siva I'm switching the screen to you. Thanks, Scott. So, good day, everyone. So, yeah, our topic for today's webinar is uh, understanding domino administration and understanding domino best practices and uh, filling the gaps and uh, probably finding some of the solution for the recurring problems that uh, we may face in maintaining the domino environment. So basically we have themed or we have the, the, the theme for uh, this webinar is to give an introduction about uh, the domino administration for the non-domino admins who are currently being maintained uh, domino infrastructure. So some of the, in our experience we have seen a, a large number of organizations are uh, Left with uh, maintaining, uh, left with maintaining the domino infrastructure uh, by using uh, their existing Windows admin or network admin. So we have tried to fill in the gaps for uh, them to understand uh, the domino administration or uh, the, the critical best practices that we feel they should follow and uh, presented it. Uh, person, I mean, uh, prepared this presentation for that. So yeah. I'm uh, Siva. I'm the technical lead uh, for Marga Systems, and I have uh, around 15 years of experience in uh, designing, deploying, and maintaining uh, different uh, collaboration solutions. We uh, Marga Systems are uh, providing uh, uh, Lotus-based uh, collaboration services for more than 10 years now. We are IBM's premier business partner and uh, we have offices in India and USA and we have uh, our partners uh, presenting us in the Middle East and Europe. So we have uh, prepared, a, uh, IBM is going to come up with an exciting release of Notes 9 which is uh, the next version of Notes which is Notes 9 socialization. So we have prepared a poster which covers or which highlights the critical important new factors that are available uh, in Notes and Domino 9. You can download it uh, from our website and we can also share the poster to you by the end of this presentation. So the agenda for uh, today's uh, webinar is uh, as, we, as we have already seen. First, uh, some of the critical best practices to feel every domino organization should uh, employ or should practice and uh, monitor and critical uh, monitoring uh, aspects of your uh, domino infrastructure and then identifying common problems and uh, I mean finding the root cause for those problems. So we have we have a comment. We have a couple of quick uh, polls for you to answer. The first one is about uh, the version of the Notes and Domino uh, environment, the uh, Notes and Domino versions that you have. And the options are uh, release five or less, release uh, six and six point five, 
7, 8 and 8.5 and above. Scott, can you please present the poll to the users? Okay, here we go. The poll is launching. We'll give ourselves about uh, 15 seconds here to, uh, to respond. We should have uh, some good responses here. It'll be interesting to see uh, where we're lying in terms of uh, versions. So we have about 80% of us have voted. Let's give us 10 more seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and close the poll and I'll display the results. And so it looks like we have a good adoption rate up to 8.5.x. That's a, that's a great number that we have in there. So 8.5 and above, almost 9, I mean more than 90 percentage of the people. So which is uh, great, which is great. Perfect. All right, I'm going to hide this poll. Okay, so poll number two. All right. All right. Did you want to show your screen first, or you want me to just go ahead and launch? You can, Scott. Okay, I'm going ahead and launch uh, the second poll. Yeah, which is about uh, support uh, that you have. Correct. So this one is, you know, how are you supporting your current Domino infrastructure? Do you have in-house teams, uh, other administrators, or do you have outsourced support? Okay. Okay, we'll give us uh, ten more seconds on this. Great. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and display the results. There we go. So, uh, majority still uh, in-house uh, Domino administrators. Again, uh, great. Perfect. All right. I'm going to hide these results, and then the screen will come back to you. Okay, Seva, you have control again. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So let's start off with the best practices that we think every Domino organization should uh, employ. So the first one is transaction logging. So we all know, man, uh, Domino is a disk I/O intensive application. So every, we all know everything in Domino nodes is database. A database is nothing but a file system file. So we need to, when Domino is actually pretty critical in uh, doing the disk I/O operation, and transaction logging actually eases that load from the Domino engine and uh, it, it, by, by enabling a separate transaction log, it reduces the, data, I mean, it reduces, uh, the possibility of databases getting corrupted and increase the integrity of the databases uh, for all the nodes, I mean, node databases. And uh, it, it, but the, the actual benefits are, we don't need to run periodically the fix-up task. Fix-up task don't need to run periodically. And uh, we have a faster server restarts. Normally, when a server restarts because of a crash, Domino has to do consistency check of all the databases in the server. But when we enable transaction logging, Domino, uh, Domino server knows which uh, databases uh, that it uh, worked on when the crash occurred. And it only checks the consistency of those databases and uh, comes back up for service pretty quickly. And transaction logging, if used effectively, will increase your backup process. Instead of taking incremental backup of your entire uh, Domino data store, you can just take uh, transaction logs as the backup. Because transaction log contains all the disk activity that are performed across all the databases in the server. So you can have period weekly full backup, and then for the uh, next week you can just take the backup of transaction log. And when an, uh, when when I, when, I, when, I, when I, in the event of uh, data loss, you can restore from the full backup and then replay the transaction log on top of those uh, full backup to 
bring them back to the state before the data loss. So the next process that we should, every organization should enable is the certification authority. Certification, I mean we all know that uh, certifier ID is a critical component in the domino infrastructure. And uh, when we, when, uh, to create a user, to create the servers, we share, normally we share the certificate ID and the password with other people, which kind of increases the uh, uh, in seminar, which is uh, insecure practice that uh, most of the domino administrators or domino organizations follow. Instead, we can just enable certification authority, which is a core component in a domino server, and uh, share, give the certificate registration authority role to the people who takes care of your user management. So without the certification ID, certificate uh, the ID and uh, the password, those people who have registration authority can create new users, create servers uh, e easily. So it is, it is in a way, it, it eases the delegation process for your administration. And the certificate, certification authority CA process can also be used to issue standards compliant internet certificates. Certificates like SMIME certificate which you can use to send encrypted messages with other systems. Systems like Exchange or other open source emailing systems. The other, the other uh, aspect of uh, the following the best practice is enabling the mail tracking option. And uh, Domino is uh, by core, um, I mean, uh, Domino is being extensively for its uh, email capability. And uh, tracking emails between the servers or between the organization are always uh, trouble for administrators. Some people might um, I mean, might not be receiving a, in a distribution list, some people might not be able to receive the message or some people really receive it uh, with the delay. So by enabling mail tracking, we can, uh, we can, we can, we can ease the uh, possible, I mean, we can ease the mail tracking uh, feature. So the mail tracking captures all the messages transferred in a server and it captures its header including the f f sender and the recipient, the time, date and time, time stamp of the message and the subject. And it's stored in a database. So it's uh, like any other node database. We can query the database later to find out about the status of the message. Whether it is being successfully delivered to the user mailbox or it is being successfully uh, transferred to another mail or it is being held for some reason. So mail tracking, you should enable it in all the servers where uh, mailing is enabled, which uh, eases your uh, mail, I mean, the mail, mail troubleshooting, which eases your mail troubleshooting. And the other uh, thing that you should um, uh, watch out for is log purging. We have seen in our experience, we have seen log file in the size of uh, gigabytes even things like uh, 10, uh, 20 gigabits of size. So normally log uh, database are set to retain the log files for seven days, but in, in some servers, the log purge may not properly. So you should periodically watch out for uh, the log file and make sure the older uh, log entries are being deleted because a bigger log file have a very big, uh, it, it affects the server performance and it also increases the complexity in, uh, in uh, troubleshooting things in the future. So you should make sure that the log files are being purged periodically. Fault recovery and NST. So fault recovery when you enable fault recovery for a server and in the case of an uh, unexpected crash, the server automatically collects the NSD. NSD is uh, node system diagnostics. So in the case of an unexpected crash, 
our domino system automatically gathers uh, the critical uh, information that is required to troubleshoot about the problem and stores it in a separate file. And uh, when we escalate uh, the support case to IBM, the first thing they are going to ask for is the NSD database. So we should enable NSD and enable fault recovery so that in the case of uh, unexpected server crash, the server collects the information, the server collects the, the potential critical information about the crash and it automatically restarts the server and make it available for service quickly instead of be manually monitoring the server and bringing it back uh, again. So this by default is disabled on all the servers and uh, in our experience we see this should be enabled on all the servers so that we don't have to worry about uh, login to, I mean, uh, log to the office and starting the server in the middle of the night or uh, in the middle of your vacation. And uh, the, by the, there is an option in fault recovery to notify you in the case of uh, crash and automatic recovery so that you will not be missed about any crash. Okay, so we have now seen some of the best practices that we feel, I mean, uh, every domino infrastructure should employ. And next we will look up, uh, I mean, look about the monitoring aspect, some of the monitoring aspect of your uh, domino infrastructure. And uh, we are going to look into things like uh, event generator and handlers and domain catalog, ID expiration and recertification overview of uh, server maintenance and some of the domino tasks uh, that are uh, running on the server. So the first, uh, first uh, item that we are going to look into is the event generator. Domino does have a built-in uh, event generator and uh, notifier which, uh, which, monitors for the, uh, which monitors your domino infrastructure and alerts you in the case of a specified event. The events can be anything like uh, ACL changes. You can monitor for uh, the ACL changes on the critical database like uh, names.nsf. If someone in, I mean, accidentally revokes or, uh, or gives an access uh, to another person, you will automatically be, you can automatically be notified if you enable the event monitor for uh, ACL uh, modification on names.nsf. And the other critical aspect is the full access admin. So full access admin gives godlike uh, uh, permission to the Domino server. So you can open any database, you can make any change with the full access admin. So full access admin should only be taken under, uh, under a critical situation. And you should monitor for who are taking full access admin in your environment. You can create specific alerts and uh, all, the, uh, all the stakeholders can be notified in case someone takes full access admin in the server. And uh, the other critical uh, monitoring that we should, uh, everyone should have is the replication monitoring for the critical database. Critical database as in names.nsf, admin4.nsf, catalog.nsf and event4.nsf. These databases should be in sync between all the servers in your environment and uh, if uh, the replication failed for some reason, you can be notified if you enable event monitoring for uh, these databases on all the servers. So these are the critical uh, event generated or more, I mean, uh, alerts that we feel you can set up. There are a lot of other uh, aspects where you can monitor also using event generator and DDM and Domino. And the next item is server maintenance checklist. Some of the, some of the frequent uh, items that we periodically check in the Domino uh, environment. So we thought uh, we would uh, share with everyone so that uh, we all know what we should check for in the service. The first one is, is the servers are being backed up regularly and the backups are they successfully being stored in the media. So you should, I mean if possible you should also do mock restores periodically at least once in a quarter to make sure your backup sets are uh, being taken properly. 
and you don't want to be in a surprise situation when an, uh, when an unexpected data loss happens. So we should uh, not just take backup, we should also make sure our backup sets are consistent and we are able to retrieve the data which is required from the backup uh, set when required. And uh, can the users access the server quickly and consistently? If we receive the server access uh, problems from a set of user periodically, we should make sure the other aspect of the environment or uh, or I mean there are no problem with the other aspects of the environment with those user, users. Things like uh, network connectivity and uh, or uh, if the users are mobile users, make sure they have. Uh, uh, I mean, they have a proper VPN access to the environment and things like that. And then you should also watch out for uh, mail routing. If you can, you can even uh, periodically send out um, mail test mails to other uh, systems and make sure both inbound and outbound mails are um, inbound and outbound mails are routed properly. And if you have employed uh, antivirus anti-spam uh, gateway make sure that uh, your antivirus and anti-spam uh, definitions are being updated so that the messages are not being incorrectly marked as virus or uh, the actual viruses some, I mean, um, might have been actually false or your outdated virus definition. So make sure the other aspect of uh, your uh, mail routing environment is also being updated regularly. And uh, go look at the admin uh, code NSF and uh, look for the admin processes whether they are being uh, periodically executed without any problem and go look out for the admin processes which, which uh, require manual administration intervention for example user mail file deletion requires manual confirmation from the administrator so you have to go you have to up, I mean approve the mail file deletion from the admin for NSF so that the mail file can I mean the mail file of the uh, employees can be deleted or the databases are being replicated properly between the servers and uh, make sure uh, yeah uh, as we already seen you can even set up a notification for uh, the mail file critical uh, mail file database replication is the server hardware functioning properly so most of the time uh, failing hardware a hardware like uh, disk or a network card will give you hints before it actually goes completely dead. So go periodically inspect servers, operating server, operating systems log and look for any uh, non-domino related or any hardware component failure. And uh, are the databases are active or are, are all the databases that are in the environment are being used properly or are there any leftover database that are uh, lying around on your Domino servers which make which actually uh, increases your storage quota also it decreases the server performance so you should archive or you should uh, yeah take backup and remove the database or uh, the outdated database obsolete database from your Domino environment And uh, next is about the Domino server tasks. Make sure only the required tasks are running on your Domino server. Some administrators might have enabled the Domino task for uh, testing and then they will leave the Domino task to run forever. For example, if someone from your organization asks for uh, POP or IMAP access, you might have enabled the POP3 or IMAP task on a server for testing and uh, you forgot to take it off after the testing. So these tasks not only consume your system resource, sometimes because of these tasks your uh, production server might encounter some unexpected crash. So you should only run the Domino server tasks which are required for your uh, functionality and uh, if possible uh, have different tasks running on different servers. Don't run all the tasks on all the servers. And these are some of the tasks that are available in the Domino, I mean in all the Domino servers. Okay, so 
So other critical uh, other critical aspect where you should uh, closely watch out for is the ID expiration. So usually all the IDs that are created will have an expiry date. So Domino or Notes alert the user uh, for the certificate or their ID file expiry. Some users might be on vacation or some users might uh, not even know what uh, uh, what is this alert about. So they might ignore. And one fine day after their ID got expired, they will be in a surprise that uh, they cannot access their mail or uh, other critical domino uh, applications. So as an administrator, we should also have a closer look or a closer look about the ID expiration periodically and make sure the user IDs are being recertified before, uh, well before uh, they are actually being expired. So you can uh, go to, you can go, I mean, uh, there's a view in names.nsf which uh, gives a list of uh, people or list of IDs that are expiring based on the days of, I mean, uh, based, based on the expiry date. So you can periodically, you can have this uh, item in your periodical checklist and monitor at least once in a month. The other critical database in Domino environment is the domain catalog. As the name suggests, it's the catalog of all the databases and applications that are available across all your servers. So you can go periodically check this database, make sure only the currently utilized databases are there in the servers and uh, not the obsolete database. So you can even export a we have export uh, the content from this view into an Excel spreadsheet and do calculation and uh, verification between uh, the database uh, that are available. So this domain catalog not just list or record the database that are available in the Domino servers, it also records the access control list. So which you can use to monitor uh, the incorrectly configured uh, Domino permissions. Some users might have, uh, or, uh, so some of the users might have been ac accidentally granted manager access to some of the critical database. So you can use domain catalog to watch out for uh, those things and revoke uh, the incorrectly configured access control list from critical database. Okay, so the next. Uh, Next item that we are going to look into is identifying the common problems and uh, possibly identifying the root cause for those common problems and solving them. We have identified agent issues, replication failure and mail routing are the most common problems that any organization face and uh, let's uh, look at the agent issue first. Agents are a critical aspect of any Domino environment. Agents are being used to, to execute specific tasks periodically or agents are being used to extract critical data from nodes, nodes uh, database and make them available for other uh, systems uh, across uh, the nodes world. So these periodical or uh, scheduled agents should <coughs> So we should uh, have a closer uh, look at uh, the agents that are uh, scheduled to execute on the servers and we should watch out for any errors they may encounter. So the first uh, place where you can go to troubleshoot an agent related problem is the agent log. You can access the agent log by using Domino Designer and uh, go look at the agent and uh, open its agent log. Agent log will normally give you the information like uh, when or the last time the agent executed successfully and uh, if there are any error encountered on the last execution or if it uh, successfully completed its uh, last run. And the next place you can look is uh, log.nsf. Log.nsf should also have similar information, but uh, log.nsf uh, also has uh, the information about the, the other aspect of the Domino server. For example, 
some other task might have been using the full CPU cycle of your Domino server. So one of your agent, uh, the scheduled agent might not be able to run properly because of the lack of the system resource. So you can go look at the server uh, uh, log to identify problems uh, related to the other aspect of uh, executing an agent. And uh, agent manager is the Domino server task which is responsible to execute the scheduled agent. And uh, by going to the Domino server console and issuing uh, the command to agent manager, we can uh, look at the agent status. For example, the most common command that we execute in the Domino server console is the tell AMGR schedule, which prints all the scheduled agents in the server and their scheduled time when they are expected to run. And you can also issue, uh, tell AMGR status to know the status about the schedule. And if you want, you can even enable the debug mode of the agent manager so that your agents are executed in the debug mode. So it, uh, will, uh, it will give the developers and uh, experienced administrators more control over the agent execution. And you can even manually execute an agent by issuing tell AMG or run command to trouble if you want to troubleshoot the uh, agent execution. And uh, the other critical uh, problem and the most uh, most common problem in Domino environment is the replication failure. So replication can fail for a variety of reasons between the servers. And uh, how do we even identify what could be the cause? So you should first go look at the replication history. The replication history is available in the file properties and uh, by clicking replication history button. So this replication history should uh, show you uh, the last uh, replication events occurred for this specific database on this server and where um, by with, with the which server this database has been replicated lost. So you can have a you can have a picture about the, when the database got uh, replicated by going to the replication history tab, uh, replication history window. And then uh, the next place you can look is about the replication settings. So the replication I mean some database in some server might have been explicitly uh, omit to replicate some of the domino elements things like uh, design elements or things like I mean or by using uh, domino or replication I mean uh, by using replication formula some of the database might be when explicitly design I mean, uh, omit uh, the documents older than some X number of days go look at those settings and make sure uh, those replication formula are not causing any problem with the expected replication results. And uh, the other aspect you should look for is replica ID. Some databases uh, might have same name between the servers, but the replica ID could be different. So you should go look at the replica ID uh, between the servers and make sure they are the same before even trying to replicate uh, the database between the servers. So the databases which have the same replica ID will be able to replicate between the servers. The name has nothing to do in the amino environment. And the ACL for any part, I mean ACL for the participating servers. And if there are any intermediate servers, and make sure those servers also has uh, the uh, privilege to replicate the data between the servers. And uh, make sure you have enough disk space available, storage space available in the server to actually pull uh, the data from the other server. And uh, make sure your scheduled replication of the connection document uh, doesn't have uh, any, I mean, doesn't explicitly omit out, uh, I mean, uh, explicitly omit the database which you are trying to replicate between the servers. Okay, and uh, finally, the mail routing issue. Mail routing issue probably the most critical aspect that uh, I mean, the critical aspect of the recurring uh, problem that any domino environment can have. So go look at the I mean, issue the show server command on the domino console 
to look at the mail.box status. Make sure there are no dead messages on your mail.box because I mean a lot of dead message or health message in mail.box will have performance uh, impact on the mail routing issue. And make sure you uh, I mean you use multiple mail.box to have a better or I mean a better performance uh, for the mail routing. And you can issue tell router show queue command to look at the Domino message queue, and it prints you the it prints you the messages which are being held in the queue and uh, reason for the okay, I mean, the reason they are being in the queue, and then you can go look at them in a look at the tasks that are running in the server. Make sure your router task is running without any problem, and then you can go look at the mail statistics to make sure everything is in place. You are you are you are not over utilizing your server uh, by looking. I mean, you can verify that you are not over I mean, utilizing your server by looking at the mail statistics, critical mail statistics. And uh, if you held them I and if you hold the message manually, you can. I mean, if the messages are being held in the mail dot box and not being replicated with another server, you can try issue route command to manually initiate a mail routing between the servers. And uh, finally, you can try trace command to check the connectivity between the servers and make sure they are able to communicate each other. So these are some of the critical, uh, some of the items that you can use to troubleshoot the mail routing issues. So I think that. That concludes the presentation and if you have any questions you can go ahead and uh, type it in the chat box. We will, uh, we can, we will answer some of the questions that you entered. Okay, we have some questions coming in. Just a reminder that um, on your GoToWebinar control uh, panel, if it is collapsed, you just need to click on the uh, red box with the white arrow and it will open up for you so you can type in uh, questions. Um, we do have a couple of questions already in. The first one is, can the transactional log path be the same drive that the data directory is on or is it best practice to have it saved elsewhere? It can. It can. Uh, the best practice to have it on a separate disk is for the performance reasons. Nowadays, most of the environment, or then most of the environments that we see, we work with, are using SAN or NAS storage, where your actual storage or actual uh, the volume or, or actual disk volume that you use on your Domino servers are uh, being uh, actually stored in different disks at the SAN level. So in that case, you don't have to have a separate volume for your transaction logging. So if your storage backend provides multiple, uh, I, I mean multiple disks for a single volume, you can go ahead and have it on the same uh, direct, I mean same drive as your data directory. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question on your slides or on your uh, server maintenance checklist um, you mentioned uh, you know just checking the server and checking um, oh, sorry you mentioned checking for alerts do you recommend having a third party monitoring product yes we do highly recommend having a third party monitoring uh, software to have a closer look into the Domino infrastructure, but wherever that, but that's not the, in the environment that is not possible, you can at least enable Domino monitoring. Domino does have a monitoring uh, feature available in the I mean, uh, using by using events4.nsf and DDM. If you don't have a third-party monitoring uh, software available in your environment, you can at least make Domino monitor itself and alert you in the case of uh, some critical events. Okay, perfect. Um, see, does your company provide Domino infrastructure consulting services? Yes. Okay. 
Um, how much? Um, uh, and and uh, the, the person that asked that uh, they can they can certainly follow up with you afterwards. But uh, next question: How much overhead does enabling mail tracking cause? Uh, I would say anywhere between five to ten percentage of uh, both CPU and disky. Not more than that. Okay. Excellent. Um, in terms of, um, let me just uh, double check the question here. <laughs> um, in terms of the the peer, peer, how how often to uh, log? Excuse me. How often should the logs be purged? Is it based on just the performance, or is it based on number of users to get a, a, the right timing interval. Okay, so it should be based on the environment. Some of the environment uh, we have seen um, might be running agents with the debug mode enabled or the agent itself might be printing some debug messages into the console which are being stored in the log data server. In those servers, you should probably have a shorter duration. And there are some organizations prefer to have it, I mean the default is 7 days, and some organizations prefer to have it even more, at least 30 days, so that in the case of an audit, they can, I mean, they have more data to add it rather than just 7 days of data. So I would say it should be based on your uh, organizational policy. But uh, I mean, uh, the number of days doesn't matter in the performance. So it's the size of the log.nsf which is going to impact the performance of your terminal server. So if your log.nsf uh, is uh, not going to cross a GB even after uh, even after uh, even after having a retention of 30 days, you can definitely have 30 days. But uh, if it crosses 10 GB, let's say in uh, five days you should probably shorten your uh, uh, retention period and uh, have uh, the older document purged more often. Okay, perfect. Next question, is there a way to reduce the size of the domlog.nsf and uh, the INI parameter? INI parameter, we can check and then, I mean, uh, Scott, you can mark it down, we can check and uh, uh, send the information. Okay. Um, and so, so I guess it was two questions. Is there a way to reduce the size of the DOM log dot NSF? Or is uh, that, what's the question again? Uh, is there a way to reduce the size of the DOM log dot NSF? Yes. Again, we can we can uh, yeah send the information uh, to the person later. Okay. We'll respond to that, and we can post that uh, out on the website as well. So, any question that wasn't addressed, okay, perfect. Um, how can you control the kind of the same question here? How can you control the size of web log? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it, it's the same. Okay, so that seems like a kind of a common theme out there that uh, some of the administrators might be struggling with. Uh, so we'll get to, we'll get some get some answers for everyone. So okay, for people, okay, I can. I mean, this is completely unrelated to the question. I mean. Uh, uh, it's not the answer to the question, but uh, something, I mean, somewhat uh, related. Uh, but the best practice is actually to have a front-end reverse proxy on top of Domino so that you can do your uh, logging on the front-end reverse proxy instead of doing that on the Domino. Domino is good at providing your, uh, I mean, making your application available on the web, whereas the reverse proxy, something like, uh, even there are a lot of open source reverse proxies available. You can you can even uh, products like the Spit or uh, uh, Nginx, you can you can set them set them up on top of your Domino web server and uh, do the logging on the reverse proxy. So reverse proxy can also fail over to I mean, uh, give a fail or high availability to your Domino infrastructure uh, without much uh, complication. So the best practice or uh, what we would suggest is. Don't enable uh, web log on the Domino server. Instead, rather have a reverse set up a reverse proxy and uh, make it uh, do the job for you. Okay, great. All right, that's 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 good information. 
Um, okay, I think we're at, at the end of uh, the list of questions. So if there are any additional questions, uh, uh, I, th uh, I think we can uh, go ahead and ha ask uh, that you can uh, send an email to Siva. I think he's going to show a slide with some contact information maybe next, um, or you can contact Marga Systems. So if there are any questions that come up afterwards uh, based on what you see in the replay or in the slides, feel free to uh, contact um, Marga Systems. So there is um, their contact information that uh, Siva is showing us. And it uh, looks like they're going to also be at the social world. Great. All right. Uh, Siva, uh, back to you for uh, your closing uh, uh, remarks and statements. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So thanks for uh, all those who have participated in this webinar. And uh, I believe the presentation or the information that we have shared today will be useful for you. So if you mean, as Scott mentioned, if you have any specific queries or uh, information required uh, based on the topic that we have discussed, you can always contact us. And we are more than uh, ready to uh, get you clarified on the doubts that you might have. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And just a reminder, we will, uh, like I said, we will send out an email to everyone to show you where this is posted. And the other links that he promised to get the poster uh, will all be sent out to you in an email. Yes. Siva, thank you very much. Very informative. Uh, well done. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. And have a great day.